So what are three surefire ways to be a better and better paid cloud computing architect? Let's talk about them. So when I came up with this list of three things that were most important to me in terms of how you can improve your cloud architecture career, um, I was taken back by the fact that it they have nothing to do with technology. So they're about dealing with hum other human beings. They're about dealing with your own self. It's about the ability to be a better leader ultimately. And so the advice here is going to be applicable across most IT careers, most IT leadership positions, you know, certainly uh, cloud architect, but also security architect and network architect and enterprise architect and people who have a variety of roles where they're picking, choosing and deciding on technology that they would like to leverage within an enterprise to get to the enterprise value. So that's interesting. So the first thing is check your ego. Uh, I think that uh, people in this game have a tendency to develop a my way or the highway mentality in terms of how they're picking specific technologies or technology configurations. And that can be dangerous because you can introduce your own biases. Uh, you may go toward a particular type of architecture, a particular type of technology. Uh, for the wrong reasons that may go to your own biases uh, in terms of the fact you have your deep training in the technology experience with the technology may know the teams, things like that, but it may be completely uh, the wrong technology for your particular situation. So work with a lot of smart people, surround yourself with smart people, but also make sure that they have the ability to provide descending opinion. So the ability to question you and the ability to make the architecture better by defending the particular architecture configuration that you put together. So as people in this business, and I've been in this business for 30 some odd years, have a tendency to develop tunnel vision in terms of the way that they like to do something and also the technology that they use. You'll find that the same people are always leveraging the same technology solution patterns from project to project. And that's probably an indication of they're not getting to an optimized architecture because they're picking the technology for the wrong reasons. And their ego is not allowing people who work around them or outside, uh, outside forces, consultants, and you know, people who write and speak on this topic uh, to provide something that is of a different opinion. And the end state of that is you're gonna to get to an under-optimized architecture. You're not going to have people who question your decisions. You're gonna use the wrong databases. You're gonna use the wrong platforms, use the wrong operating systems. It's gonna be on cloud when it should be on premise. Uh, it's gonna be on premise when it should be on cloud. Lots of these things are never gonna to come to light because you have such a strong personality and such a strong ego that you're not allowing these things to occur. So you yourself are making bad decisions and you don't wanna be in that place. So open up your mind, take opinions from lots of other people, uh, read and take opinions from outside the organization um, and try to do a better job in being an objective and also a better leader because you're going to be a much more desired leader to work with if you're listening to people who are under you. And so lots of good things about being a bit more humble than you are right now. So check your ego and ultimately you need to take other opinions and that the way that you think an architecture should be going may not be the right way. Second would be create metrics so you're able to define success. What that means is when you go into a project, in other words, we're gonna configure an architecture to solve a particular business issue, supply chain automation, for example, we need to have a clear understanding of how success is gonna be measured. If, for example, we're going to build a supply chain uh, automation system, and we're doing that because it's gonna bring value back to the business. How are we bringing value back to the business? What are the metrics that we're, uh, that we're bringing to uh, understand to how these things are gonna be working? Is it going to be the value of agility, the ability to change, the ability to optimize the supply chain? And if so, how are we putting a dollar number on that 
So we're able to measure the amount of value that the work you're doing to build this particular system is going to have for the business. And that's a tough thing to do because you get into the value of agility, uh, you know, different soft values versus hard values. We can certainly look at the, the ability to um, have, um, uh, certainly look at the ability to measure hard cost. But it, when you get into agility, you get into other soft value creation kinds of things, it gets a little muddy. So, but you can put together metrics that measure those things as well. In other words, if the existing as is state is this and the to be state with this system is this, how much of a difference in terms of the value that's coming back to the business, both in operational cost savings, which may be secondary to, to agility and other value points, and also value cost savings, the ability to leverage the value of the innovation that you're creating within, the, with, within this particular system that you're building. Um, we do that at the beginning of the project because we're going to go to stakeholders and we're gonna say we need a certain amount of money to build this system, which is gonna get us to this state, which is going to generate a certain amount of value for the business. And you need, need to be able to define that. And also, you need to be able to measure when you've reached the objectives of the value that you're creating and prove that also to the stakeholders. In other words, we've been at this a year, we spent $10 million, but we're able to return $100 million in value back to the business. And here's the metrics that we have to prove that that's the case. Uh, it's going to be a much more stronger position for you to be in. It's going to be easier for you to define your value when it comes time to uh, to get your review at the end of the year. It's also going to be lessons learned that you're able to take to another level um, as you move from project to project to project. So the metrics model that we're creating in this particular instance, we can move to our next project. We can just modify it and change it in terms of... Uh, uh, how it's going to be adapted to, say, an inventory control system or whatever we're building next. So build the metrics for a few reasons. Number one, you have a clear understanding to the stakeholders in terms of how you're going to be creating value, how much value you're looking to create. And then you can get to the end state of the project to determine whether or not you hit that objective or not. And you have to have the measurements in place. You have to have the metrics in place so we know whether we succeeded or not. Keep that in mind. The final suggestion is network with other architects. Uh, we, we have a tendency within this business to operate on islands into ourselves. And this, go, this goes back to the ego issue. So in other words, we're not taking a lot of outside opinions uh, in terms of where architecture is going. And we're not working with a lot of our peers. So again, in uh, many occasions that I see with our, some of the architects out there, it's my way or the highway. It's my technology stack. I'm going to build it this way. And I'm not looking for other opinions that are going to tell me uh, about other things that are happening out there. So network with individuals, network with your peers, network with pro other professionals who are doing this, whether that's on LinkedIn or, or Twitter X or whatever. So that you have these friendships, these relationships with other architects out there who are also doing what you're doing. And after a while, you realize this is an extremely valuable thing to have because they can assist you in your career, helping you find other opportunities, for example, helping you find people that you can hire to bring on your team, and also you can assist them. So this symbiotic relationship, this ability to share information, this ability to get other opinions, and use those opinions longer term the, and just creating relationships that are going to last your career really strengthen your position as an architect because you have the ability to do things within a particular industry and you know all the other movers and shakers in the industry and you're working as a uni unified group which is going to be a much stronger position than if you're just an island into yourself you're just being an architect so learn from them uh, network with, with people, uh, help them if you're asked to help them and uh, ask for help if you need it. And it's going to take a while to build those relationships up, to build your network up, uh, as we know with uh, social media out there. But start doing this today. Um, be friendly, be helpful, be professional, uh, reach out, make friends, introduce yourself as to what you're doing, what kind of problems you're solving, things like that. They'll do the same thing and then I guarantee you at some point in time in your career, you're going to reach a point where you're gonna need their help and they're gonna need your help. And it's good that you have each other. 
Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, make sure to comment below and tell me what you think would be a surefire way to increase uh, increase your, your architecture ability, your ability to be a better cloud architect or any architect for that matter. I'd love to hear it. Also, if you have any topics that you'd like to suggest for additional videos, put those down there as well. I do read all the comments and hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much.